Hi everyone, welcome back to L'Amore La Musique. Today I'm going to be presenting my 2023 Beauty Heroes Retrospective. It's pretty self-explanatory. I take a look back at the previous year of Beauty Heroes boxes and share some more longitudinal thoughts after I've had a chance to really test and use and integrate a lot of the products. I've done one of these retrospectives every year since I've been working with Beauty Heroes. I have a playlist of all the past Beauty Heroes retrospectives that I've done, so that link will be down below. Today we're going to be covering the January 2023 box all the way up through December of 2023. So I realized that it is now March and we're already four months into this new year, so there are more boxes that I could cover, but I really think that it just makes sense to make it a calendar year annual thing no matter how delayed I am in getting it up. If you aren't familiar, Beauty Heroes is a monthly eco-beauty box that gets delivered to your door. There's a lot of flexibility with how you sign up for the subscription. You can do one box at a time and cancel as you wish. You can do three, six, or 12 month subscriptions and the longer term subscription you sign up for, the lower the cost of the box. This is not novel or new. We kind of all know how these uh, programs or subscriptions work at this point. I do always have an ongoing discount code, Lamore15, and it gets you 15% off any term Beauty Heroes subscription. Uh, it is for first time Beauty Heroes customers, so if you haven't yet used that or used it with a particular email, then that would be your opportunity or your workaround for that. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with January 2023. The first box of 2023 featured a brand that has been featured before, Bathing Culture. They're known for their Castile soap product, the Mind and Body Wash. They started with, I think, just the original Mind and Body Wash and then went on to develop different scents of this. This is the Meadow Vision scent that came in the box. And they've developed other products as well for the brand. So included in the box was an eight fluid ounce bottle of the Mind and Body Wash, full sizes of the Kelp Forest Shampoo and Good Seed Conditioner, a four fluid ounce bottle of the Heat Wave Body Oil. This did get used up completely. I like it. I don't love it. I think I like the original scent maybe a tad better. I don't particularly love the feel of a Castile soap product on my body in the shower. I prefer something that's a little bit more just lightly sudsing. And you know, Castile soap has a, a real slippery feel to it. The shampoo and conditioner, fantastic products. These are actually brand new ones because I used up the initial ones that came in the box and I went on to repurchase these during some sale the Beauty Heroes was having. Great products if you have hair that needs clarifying, if you have fine to medium hair that might get a little bit oily at the scalp or tends to get weighed down. I found these to just really work for my hair type. Now you'll see later in the year there's a totally different shampoo and conditioner for a totally different hair type. So there was kind of something for everybody this year, but I initially, because I don't really like the way that these smell, but I could not deny how well they performed on my hair and how much my hair liked those products, enough to go on and repurchase. We're gonna try and keep the white balance in check for this video today. When you're holding up a lot of products, it can tend to throw off the white light balance of the camera. The Heat Wave Body Oil, now this is the original that came in the box and I just was, I was not a fan, so you can see I didn't use it really at all. Um, it was really a scent thing for me, just not a fan. It kind of reminded me of um, an odd product from my childhood. I don't even know what, but I just got sort of a nostalgic scent, not necessarily one that I was that keen on. So, you know, it's very nice quality. It was really just a scent thing with that for me. Let's move along to the February 2023 box. This was my least favorite box of the entire year. The brand featured was Leilani. So this would be a case of not particularly liking the brand and then also not even really being able to use um, one of the products. The two products featured co-heroes were the Aqua A Retinoid Renewing Serum and the Pomplamoose Tropical Enzyme Cleansing Oil. I have tr had tried this cleansing oil in the past, so I gave it another go. You can see I didn't use it at all. I tried it a couple times to see if this time around I could enjoy it. So 
sickeningly sweet to me. Honestly, I know some people really go gaga for this brand in the sense to me, they're very um, juvenile smelling and almost like they kind of remind me a bit of little girls plastic toys. I know that that's just quite a disparaging way to describe them, but they like sort of remind me of my My Little Ponies or Cabbage Patches when I was a kid. It is also a rinsable cleansing oil, which is not my first choice in a cleansing oil, but I will tolerate that in a product I otherwise like in terms of the scent, the slip, the rinse, the finish. The, the scent is really a non-starter for me with this one and most Leilani products. The Aqua A Retinoid I never even used once because I just don't use any kind of synthetic vitamin A products and I that's a, a hill I will die on for myself. Here's what it looks like. It's like an oil. It actually smells quite nice. Mm, kind of reminds me of something that I'm not able to place. I, I've talked about my opinion on synthetic skincare, whether it's green beauty or conventional beauty, so many other places, but I just am not going to, I think, ever fall for this ideology that we need to be preventing our skin's natural aging process by manipulating it with vitamin A, peptides, procedures. It's just not something I buy into, and I don't think I'm ever going to. So, there are negative side effects to using synthetic products on your skin, interferes with your body's own natural signaling mechanisms. Yes, certain you know in, internal processes decline with age as they should, <laughs> uh, like collagen production or you know everything changes. I would just like to go through that process in a way that is supportive rather than manipulative. And that's just my, my take on it. I said what I said. The March 2023 box featured three products from quite an aesthetically beautiful brand, Henne. The products in the box were the Illumine Face Oil, the Luxury Lip Balm, and the Lip Mask. Henne, again, is quite a venerable brand in green beauty. They've been on the scene for quite a while. I've tried products over the years. And it's a brand I don't really jive with for some reason. I promise we're gonna start getting to boxes that I like because this, I know that the these last two boxes I'm kind of being a little critical about. Overall, I found 2023 to be one of the best years Beauty Heroes had had for me in recent memory, but we have to kind of get through some of these boxes I didn't love so much in the beginning of the year. I This is a brand I really want to like and I feel like I should like, there's brands more than just henne in the market that I that I feel 12 beauty I guess would be another one that I was talking about kind of recently uh, They're well loved and the products are so high quality and thoughtfully formulated But there's just something about it that I don't particularly like now I did use up the whole Illumine face oil. This has cloudberry seed oil in it, which is quite an expensive um, ingredient that I think is nice this is definitely turned at this point, but I did use the whole bottle up but it kind of has that rancid oil smell now. I did not use this up on my face. I did use it up primarily as a body oil. The thing I did, didn't really like about this, well, packaging wise, I don't really like dispensers like this because you don't have as much control over what's coming out as you do a traditional dropper, which I guess is what I prefer and primarily what most oils are packaged in. It was fine, but I did not like using it as much as I like other face oils that I have from La Par, from Infiore, from Earthwise oils that I'm finishing up, you know, brands like that. It was quite a nice lightweight texture, but I, I don't know, I was just kind of middling on it, I guess is the best thing I could say. These I sort of actively dislike, both the lip mask and the luxury lip balm. They're just missing something for me and I don't quite even know if I can explain what it is. The lip balm I actually keep here um, in my desk and I, I use it every week before my live get ready with me's and I kind of complain how I don't really like it but I'm using it because I don't really have anything else. I do have a brand new lip balm from a brand new to me brand that I'm trying, but until then, I this is just this was just sort of the path of least resistance, and I've been using it. I I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't really care for it. The lip mask is, I guess, more of an active dislike. You can see I've barely used it. I find it to be very mm, menthol-y, Kind of reminds me of a Vicks 
vapor rub cough drop drugstore cough drop type of thing and with this i actually find it to be not nurturing or healing or supportive to my lips at all so that could just be my personal interaction with the ingredients or the formula but i tried using it as you know 20 minutes a very thick layer on as a lip mask and i just felt like it did absolutely nothing so they're just not not products that were efficacious for me okay april is one of the boxes where i do not have either product physically with me but they were both completely used up and it was featuring the tcm skincare brand yina that had been rebranded and i think this was my first time trying the products in their rebranded packaging included in the box were the essential mist and the hydra cloud cream I was quite excited to try these. I thought it was a very well-timed box. They were products that were perfect for this time last year, springtime. It was the April box, so I would have been testing them at this time last year. In particular, the mist I really loved. I would probably consider repurchasing it if there were not so many others like in my queue to test. But I used eight, eight to 10 pumps every morning to refresh my face. I would work skincare in with it. Used that way, I got through it in a couple of months. It was very easy and nice to finish. It was incredibly refreshing, calming soothing it was just really a gorgeous product the hydro cloud cream i actually liked as well and i'm not i don't use creams in my skincare routine really at all so i did primarily use that up kind of as like decollete upper body type of situation but i did try it as part of skincare and it was really nice just it the both products felt like they were able to hold and transmit like a juicy, bouncy water quality to the skin. The texture of the cream was just very light and souffle-like, cooling, calming, same way that I would describe the mist. They paired really well together. I thought they were just fantastic. And I heard from a lot of people that they also really enjoyed this box. So Moving on to May, I was really excited to see this box come through. And this is when I was like, well, Beauty Heroes is really starting to turn it around for me because this is, was just such a joy to receive anytime iuna comes in a beauty heroes box people freak out because the value is just the i guess the opportunity to try products that are out of the price point of a lot of people just a really special thing to be able to do so i was not expecting to see this in the box at all because beauty heroes had been pretty explicit that they were not going to be doing any more iuna mask boxes around the holidays but they kind of tricked everybody because then this showed up so this was a new release last spring the iuna eye serum new product at the time and then the sidekick was a small size of the nectar mask which was the limited edition terra mask from i want to say two years ago terra fluida perhaps but it's, it's hard for me to keep them straight. I had a really positive first impression of the eye serum so much that I went on to immediately buy a backup box. Nectar was never a huge hit for me. I would actually layer it as an eye treatment with the eye serum. I tried using it all over my face. I actually found it to be slightly sensitizing on me and I found this to in the long run be slightly sensitizing on me too so i spoke about this product quite at length in a podcast episode i did not long ago on patreon where i talked about the 10 products that did not make my best of beauty 2023 and why so i shared a lot of detail there the long and short of it is that i ultimately found this product to be dehydrating to the skin around my eyes I did a lot of trial and error with how much I was using, how I was applying it. At one point I was getting kind of excessive eye watering from it, so I communicated back and forth with Iuna about that. Even when I was able to kind of get the correct dose response for me, I still found that it was leading to crepe, the slightly crepey looking skin under my eyes. And once I stopped using it, that went away. So it was definitely the product that was dehydrating. I do think this product delivers though. You absolutely get an immediate firming, tightening, lifted effect from it. Like more than any other eye product I've ever used. 
but the trade-off for me ended up being that it kind of threw my skin out of balance a bit now could that be rectified by layering it or yeah yes uh, probably but i just kind of went back to my tried and true infiori v clear supreme and i'm happy with that but it was still an absolute joy to be able to test that and if it doesn't dehydrate your skin it is truly fantastic for the results that it delivers june 2023 my birthday month like very nice big generous really feel like you're getting a big gift type of box because there were all four of these products in there so this was another hair care box with one body care item the nature of things hair cleanse concentrate and hair condition concentrate alongside the cleansing body and scalp polish and the nourishing body cream. Wow, was I excited to try these. I get very Aesop vibes from this brand. I don't know if you would agree with that or not, but I, I don't know, I guess it's just the presentation and even the experience of the products of it reminds me of a version of Aesop. I guess Aesop is a little bit more herbal i i don't know nature of things has more of like a creamy earthy subdued kind of scent profile the thing about these is that they are extremely hydrating extremely moisturizing and if you have fine hair they're most likely going to be too heavy. These are made with cocoa nut, sapote, and swiss apple stem cells and the conditioner has shikaki hibiscus and hyaluronic acid in it i actually didn't even realize that why are they putting hyaluronic acid in hair care? It seems like completely pointless. When I would use these, even though they're not suited to my hair type and texture, I would often get compliments um, the day after I would shampoo and condition my hair with these because they really do make your hair look soft and silky and really nice. Just long term, they're not a fit or I guess re used as a regular staple. They're not right for my hair type but they are right for somebody's hair type and they are amazing. Cleansing body and scalp polish. I started using this early in 2022 and I absolutely loved it. I will always associate it with being postpartum with my second baby. If you've had a baby, you can probably relate, but those first one to three months after you have a baby, any kind of moment you can steal away for yourself to have a hot shower or use a special product, you feel reborn in a way that you never have and never will honestly it, i had the same experience when i was postpartum with my first baby so this was one of those products that like brought me back to life when i was sleeping like two hours a night with a nursing baby um so it, it's i still to this day really love it i don't really use it as a body polish i do like it as a scalp scrub and it's my favorite scalp scrub I've ever used. And then the nourishing body cream is also really nice. The reason it's so full, and truthfully, I should have focused on using this more, is I kept it downstairs here at my work area to use as a hand cream, you know, when I'm working or whatever. And I, I guess just because things have been chaotic this year with moving a lot and renovating, I just haven't been working at my desk all that much. And therefore have not used it, but I need to put this back in active rotation where I can really use it because it's it's really nice. The scent is just so unique of these products. It's a scent that I like, so that means I'll use the product. All right, July, none other than my favorite brand, True Botanicals, ha ha ha. I just did some Instagram stories about the current box for March of 2024, which is another True Botanicals box. I had to, you know, not super great things to say. I am using the cleansing balm from this month's box, March 2024. But anyway, let's talk about July of 2023. I only have one product with me. I, I must have given these other two away. I think at Thanksgiving, I took a bag of products to my sister-in-law, I think, but I don't know. They, they could be floating around here somewhere, but no matter. The Chebola Active Serum, the Skin Barrier Sun Shield SPF 30, and then the product I do have is the Vitamin C Booster. I'm never excited to see a True Botanicals box, and uh, you know I'm a total black sheep in that regard. People love this brand. The Vitamin C Booster actually made it into my best of beauty. So if you haven't seen that video, I talked about this as the best treatment product of the year for me. This product is so dang effective. I don't even regularly use a vitamin C product. As I've said in this video, I'm not a fan of manipulative, active skincare, but a little 
dash of this into your oil at night, for the amount of effort that that requires, the effect that you get is sort of bananas. Um, it just looks like you did a much more extensive treatment. It is a cult product and one that I think deserves the reputation. So I really like this product. I never would have tried it if it had not been in the Beauty Heroes box and you could go hear more in Best of Beauty. The Chubula Active Serum, I'm just gonna say, I think that product is completely overrated. I did not find it to be compelling. I can't remember if it has hyaluronic in it or not. I don't know, I just found it to be take it or leave it. And that product has, again, a cult following and that's one that I just didn't jive with. The Skin Barrier Sun Shield SPF 30, you know where I covered this and you could see it sort of swatched and in action is in a video that I did over the summer talking about and comparing the four, I think, SPF products I was using last summer and that was one of them. Overall, I found the sheen and sort of tint that it gave the skin was slightly too peachy, almost lacquered looking on my skin. Yes, you could mix it with other things. You could tone that down. It, it, I mean, it was quite easy to use as far as a tinted SPF product. I think that category of product has come a really long way. Actually, there's so many good ones on the market now. And I found the Sun Shield to be fine but certainly not anything that was going to supplant my love for the Lapar Day Silk, which is not a tinted product at all. But I like to take a, a really pigmented sea buckthorn or rosehip seed or turmeric infused um, face oil, of which I have many, and I like to mix that into the Lapar Day Silk, and that's what I really, that's just my ride or die go-to every day. But I did enjoy getting to try the Sun Shield. In the end, I was not the biggest fan of the finish, and there are things that I have and used that I liked a bit better. I feel like I'm actually making decent time in today's video. Let's move on to August. Mm, one of my favorite boxes of the year, uh, for sure, because it features a brand that is one of my top three brands of all time. And of course I'm talking about In Light. Amazing, stunning brand, probably the best brand I have ever discovered through Beauty Heroes in November of 2018 was when they were actually first featured. And they've done boxes throughout the years, limited edition boxes. I have a whole collection of In Light products. I'm sure you know that I love this brand at this point. The products in the box from last summer were the Floral Tonic, staple product for me and the neck firming serum which was a new release for in light in 2023 i did a short promotional video for in light to launch this it demonstrated the technique that they like to teach for how to use this product with a little bit of um, lymphatic drainage massage that's over on in light's youtube channel so i'll link that down below it's very short it's like a minute and a half or something, two minutes. I love both of these so, so, so much. This is an absolute staple for me. Um, this is a fresh bottle and I always have a backup. I always have one going. I go through it at a really good clip. I use it every single morning to basically wash my face with. It's a floral water, not really a toner. So I think that's kind of an important distinction to make. If you are still, splashing your face with water at the tap in the morning, I highly recommend trying to replace that with this. You just get to the sink, put a little bit of this into your hand, like a quarter size, you go like this, and you basically just simulate washing your face with this, working it into the skin, and I can almost guarantee you will start to see an immediate shift in your skin. So when I made that switch to doing that, and I do it with all other toners now too, like the Yina Essential Mist, or I'm using the Blissoma Ion Hydration right now, I basically just wash, wash or rinse my face, refresh my skin in the morning with a toner instead of tap water. This is empty, the neck firming serum. I used up one and I have, um, I think two backups. I think I bought one and then one came in a weekend edition Beauty Heroes box. It has this gorgeous scent. It, it sort of reminds me a bit of um, like a baby centric product that you would find in In Lights line or another sort of comparable line. It's just like, it has a very soft, creamy nuttiness. So it has sesame, hazelnut, avocado, sunflower, grape seed, cypress, rosemary, cacay seed oil. That's what I was thinking, not kakui. Cacay is in here. I'm, you know, the hazelnut has me thinking. I'm newly using those stunning products from Boxwalla 
from the German brand La Cour, and hazelnut oil is in the cleanser, and oh, I, you guys, I have no words for those, that brand and those products, wow. I could write effusive love letters to Inlight for the rest of my life and it wouldn't be enough for me to express how much I love them as a brand. They are just some of the most supremely high quality products I have ever used in my entire life and I will always have cabinets and drawers full of their things. It's just the way it is. Okay, now on to September. And this is when, at that time in the year when I was like, wow, they are just like box after box. Beauty heroes, they're knocking it out of the park. And I felt that way about this September box too because I had been very, very curious to try one of the products in the box. So Lil Fox was the brand and they featured the flower goo and the succulent pudding. Now I had had friends tell me how much they were loving succulent pudding. Both of these products have hyaluronic acid in them so I remember Kevin asking if I wanted to try them because he knows how I feel about hyaluronic. And I was like, yes, I still want to try them uh, because they have quite a reputation. What ended up happening with this box is that I did not like this product at all, but I loved the flower goo. This was also in the podcast episode about 10 products that didn't make it into my best of beauty and why, but it was like right on the cusp. I, I just really like it as a serum, everything about it. Let me show you what it looks like. When I'm assessing products, I'm looking at so many parameters or markers of a product, the texture, the color, the appearance, the scent, the packaging, the functionality, the experience. Now this is one of, oh my God, it smells so good. This is just a product that I, just smelling the product is a super pleasurable, enjoyable experience for me with this product. And I was very excited when I experienced this because, you know, I really had been lamenting that my favorite Earthwise serum, Ambrosia du Cerato, is, was no more, right? I was not going to be able to get that. And so what kind of watery, cushiony, plumping, fun type of serum product can I get to replace Ambrosia du Cerato? And this would definitely be a contender. Now, it depends on how you feel about hyaluronic acid. It's not something that I like to use regularly, but that aside, this is so nice. It says Botanic Ferment Stem Cell Serum Hydrate and Repair. The thing is, I have since come to become a little bit more critical of the peptide heavy perspective in skincare since this came. This has biomimetic polypeptides, brightening ferments and amino acids to heal and reset the skin. So this would, you know, definitely I think fall into a type of product that I am becoming a little bit more questioning and critical of. But that said, we all need to have fun and try different things and branch out and there really are no absolutes. I have a perspective and I try and not be too rigid and still get some enjoyment out of trying new things. This is fantastic. Even if it's not something I would use long term, I absolutely loved it. Now succulent pudding I found to be probably the most confusing product of the year for me personally. Now I hated the scent. This was like a scent miss for me. The color, very unappealing. If you've had a baby, you will know this color. This left such a weird finish on my skin. Um, sometimes I come across products that are so, like the dry down, it, it's almost like a, I guess mattifying would be the way to describe it but it's almost like a dry powdery feel on the skin. I just couldn't find a place for this in my routine. I did not find it to do what it said it was going to do on the label at all. Like succulent pudding makes me think it's gonna be really juicy and plumping. And I found it to like sort of be the opposite of that on my skin. So I just, I was very perplexed by this product and I tried to use it several different ways and then I just kind of gave up. So I don't know what I was missing. It says ultra rich hydrating emulsion to instantly soothe and replenish dull dry and sensitive skin. This also has the cell communicating penapeptides, niacinamide, fermented oats and minerals. It targets visible concerns of dehydration, loss of firmness, redness, fine lines. I mean, I guess if I used it every day for a month, I would be able to tell you if it did any of those things. I feel like even just initially testing something, you should be able to tell if it's giving your skin a, a sort of 
bouncy moisture boost and I just did not with that. All right, three boxes left. October rolled into, again, another favorite box of mine in the year. It featured what I consider to be a very understated but gorgeous brand who is really a pioneer in green beauty, Julie Longyear of Blissoma. The box featured the mild rice face cleanser in this nice big bottle, the evening calming elixir, and then the lavish loving recovery mask, which I have used in the past. And this was a favorite product of mine in 2019 during my first postpartum when I had extremely dry skin. This was the only product that would calm my skin down. I have quite a history with that, and then I have history with this product too, the Mild Rice Face Cleanser. I first tried this product in probably 2013, a long time ago when I was just getting into green beauty. I really didn't like it. It was when these, it was like an aluminum bottle, all the Blissoma stuff was, was packaged in aluminum. I did not know how to really properly use Green Beauty products. I didn't try and remove my makeup first. I was kind of trying to use this product to remove SPF and makeup and everything. And clearly it's not going to work for that. But if you are already in a good routine of makeup removal and oil or balm cleansing, this is like the chef's kiss icing on the cake to a cleansing routine. It's just so nice, oh my gosh. This is one of Jeannie Jarno's true hero products. She talked about it over the holidays. It has this just such a perfect, light, refreshing, kind of lemony, fresh scent. The part, exfoliating particles in it are so fine. Um, it's more like a very gentle little polish. It's not a scrub. I use it a couple of times a week as my second cleanse. I do about four pumps and it's perfection. Lavish Loving Recovery is pretty much the closest I get on a regular basis to using a cream in my routine. So I used this a lot this winter. You need the smallest little amount like that, and it can be your finishing step of an evening skincare routine, or you can use it as a treatment mask, but I always use it as just a really nice finishing step. It really creates this um, protective barrier on the skin. I find it softening, calming, hydrating, moisturizing. Perfect. It's like a desert island product for me. So if you live in a cold climate, I think it's a must. I could see how it could be a little bit too heavy for certain people, but beta glucan in particular, my skin really likes, and I love that it features so prominently in here. The evening calming elixir. This was a new product to me from Blissoma. I like it. It's, mm, it's a little bit, gentle. So I, I, you know, I'm always talking about skincare that's too aggressive. This is really kind of, I guess, more up my alley for a treatment type of product because it's just really focused on herbs and being very gentle and calming. I don't reach for it that much because I just don't ever really like to layer tons of products, but this would be a serum step at night. The same way you're wanting to use, you know, a flower goo or what are the other serums I'm using right now? An essence or a serum under an oil or something in the morning. This would be like the evening step, but it's it's just like a light cream. So I find that I don't particularly like layering balms or oils over it. So I've had a bit of a hard time figuring out how to use this. I really love that Beauty Heroes delivered this perspective to the Beauty Heroes community because it's definitely more understated and subtle and falls more in the supportive, respectful skin category, like in light, which is my jam. It's not like pow in your face, let's use a retinoid, let's use the peptides, let's use the true botanicals. It's, it's just way more going with the flow. And I love that. And I love that they did that box. Okay, then we move into November. This box was not a hit for me. I would not say I downright disliked it. Well, maybe I kind of did. This would probably be tied for me with Leilani as being one of my least favorite boxes of the year. Two products from Mukti. This is an Australian brand. I've tried lots of things over the years, but this is the Queen of the Night Cream and the Age Defiance Eye Serum. I had used the eye serum in years past and just never found that I liked it enough to use it regularly. It doesn't actually provide enough moisture around the eyes for me, which is kind of strange. I, I just find that I've become so particular about eye creams over the years or eye oils. The only products I really use around my eyes are from Infiore, and that is after trying so many. 
Um, so I just think it's kind of a personal journey to find, you know, your ideal eye cream. I can experiment a lot more with other skincare products and other categories, but eyes, I feel like I've just gotten very, very picky about. And so I tried this a little bit in the beginning when it came and I remembered like, it's just not doing it for me. So I kind of have been using this up as a hand cream. <laughs> and then the queen of the night cream, um, I don't really use face creams, so it, for me, it was kind of a miss in that department, although I know a lot of people do use face creams. If I had to pick a face cream from the year that I thought was better, it would definitely be the Yina one from the spring. This one has a rose scent that I do not think is that compelling. I'm not the biggest fan of the way the scents of a lot of Mukti products land. I, I don't know what it is. They always kind of remind me of a barn, like a horse barn, hay, apples, straw. I don't know, I've talked about this before, so it's not really, you know, new news, but the texture of that cream is quite nice. I think you just have to be okay with the scent, which is kind of a traditional rose type of scent. And if you, I don't know, it. it it was not my favorite. Let's just leave that there. But then I go back to the ingredients and I'm like, well, like I really feel like I should like this because the ingredients are so nice. The queen garnet plum, strawberry gum, bush tomato, kangaroo pawflower, kakadu plum. So this has all of those really nice Australian botanicals. What I will say about Mukti is I think that they're pretty good for sensitive skin. I've always found that to be the case. You know, they're, you're not gonna, at least I have never had the sense that they're gonna create sensitivity or cause a reaction, which is a risk you run more with a very, very active brand like Ayuna or even True Botanicals. Like I've had a reaction to one of the products in the box this month. So I do think that these are beautifully formulated and featuring ingredients that are you're just not gonna see every day. But that's a nice transition into the next brand to close out the year, December 2023, featuring Blue Alchemy, which is another Australian botanical-centric brand. Now, this was a really nice box to end the year because, again, it was one of these boxes that just felt really full and generous. The three products in the box were the Photo Enzyme Body Polish, a full size of the Active Relief Body Oil, which has Holy Basil, Copaiba, and Hinoki, and they also gave this really beautiful body brush, uh, which came in this little bag. I have several of these because I've been a dry brusher on and off for many years, and this is a very nice one. You could hold it like this or like this and do your dry brushing before you get in the shower or in the bath. So I thought that was really nice. And again, I thought this was thoughtful for this time of year when, you know, the holidays are draining for a lot of people. And so I think this box really encouraged a sense of self-care ritual kind of to a, a higher standard. You could do some dry brushing followed by the scrub and a nice self abiyanga massage with the oil, just really nicely put together. So what I have to say about this box, I, for the first time, used the body polish last month, maybe three or four weeks ago. The reason I didn't use it in December is because we had just moved, things were kind of in chaos, we traveled for the holidays, renovating a home. So this box actually kind of slipped by me at the time that it came, just given it was such a busy time. And I finally got around to trying this last month and you guys, I was completely blown away. I do not have time to use extraneous scrubs or polishes or products really, but I made the time to use this and it is probably the best body scrub I've used. I would say that I like it better than my previous favorite, the Red Flower Arctic Berry Scrub. Everything about the scent, the way it goes on the skin, the slight residue that it leaves behind, like you don't really honestly even, in my opinion, need to use a moisturizing product after. But the scent, it's like the lemongrass, which I, I'm pretty sure is in here, guarana and papaya, they say. And I don't have the box, but the way that the steam opens up the scent with this, so I use this in the shower. I take it in the shower, I kind of stand away from the water, and then I just scrub my entire body. And the steam of the shower, just makes the fragrance really bloom open and come alive and then you rinse it off and your skin is so soft and it's amazing. Now the one or couple things I will say, I really do not like that it's in glass. I do think this is quite a hazard to take this into the shower. Everybody has a different situation. Like do you have a little 
alcove in the shower? Do you have a bench? Are you putting it on the floor and then it's gonna get water in it? I have broken glass in the shower before and it's absolutely miserable, so I don't like that at all. I guess that's really the only negative thing I would say about it. One jar of this with how I use it would last four to five scrubs. So I went ahead and bought a backup during the spring ahead sale. It was 20% off and I liked it so much that I bought another, so big rave. Now on the other side of things, I do not care for the body oil. I had tried this when it had just been released and this is gonna be so dependent on whether or not you like the scent because the texture of this oil is divine. It's really a very beautifully textured oil, but whew, wow, that Hinoki is so leathery, so strong, um, so smoky. It, it's just too much for me personally. And then I love this. I think it's amazing. I'm so glad that they included this beautiful artifact that I can add to my body care collection. All right, we made it through, and I think a relatively expedient way to get through 12 boxes, a whole year's worth of boxes is quite a lot. I don't think I did many standalone reviews in 2023. I think I did one for Yina, and I may have done one other one, or maybe Yina was the only one that I did. You know, I dream of the days that I can get back to doing a monthly Beauty Heroes box review. That used to be a standard for me when I was uploading videos every weekend. Someday. 2024 for Beauty Heroes, I would say is off to, I'm off to a little bit of a less enthusiastic start than when I look at the totality of 2023. It, it is still pretty early in the year, so I'm excited to see what ends up happening the rest of the year, but I thoroughly enjoyed 2023 with Beauty Heroes. Um, actually, let's quickly end, even though I've been on for quite a while, let's quickly end with my personal heroes from the last year. Bathing Culture Shampoo and Conditioner, Nature of Things Scalp Polish, True Botanicals Vitamin C, both products from Inlight, the Floral Tonic and the Neck Firming Serum, the Blissoma Mild Rice Face Cleanser and the Loving Recovery Beta Glucan Mask. And last but not least, the Blue Alchemy Body Scrub. I think that's a great note to end on my personal hero products. I'll link everything down below. So if any of these pique your interest, you can go shop everything on Beauty Heroes below. Lamore 15 if you'd like to pick up a Beauty Heroes subscription at any point. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, hopefully soon. Bye.